Um, David, when did we actually lose you whenever you um, dropped out last session? Um, I honestly can't even remember. He wasn't at the food market. You were controlling him at the food market. Okay. Right, so, but in that case, does anybody like want to explain to David what happened at the food market? What uneventful thing happened? Can we just not show him? So, I, I, I mean, I remember, I, I think I was there by the end of the fight book, and then I don't remember what else happened. <laughs> Can you just go to the, the map and show him what is now sitting in base? Uh, we will, I will once I hear your attempts to explain this to him. Oh yeah, enough. Um, you know we have a pet sushi. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. we, we have Mordred as no. well now. Uh, his name's not Mordred. Uh, what's his name, Charlotte? Um, Morgul. His name would be... Why do I have too many notes? Oh my god. Because your notes, uh, all my notes got chewed by a child. Literally. <laughs> Meet Miguel the giant constrictor snake. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, I Miguel. completely forgot Miguel. I named him Miguel. <laughs> cousin Miguel, technically. Oh, yeah, Cousin Miguel, he's from the heat. Um. Yeah, so we're going to have Miguel. Yeah, I mean, he grew from a bean. He grew from, uh, I, I recall the snake running away. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Miguel. Miguel. <laughs> Miguel, the snake. The giant Miguel constrictor snake. Giant snake. Who is now free and loose. Everyone owes me a goat leg. No, they owe you the whole goat. <laughs> Sorry, they owe me a goat. Yes, yeah, so Tordon got hold of a whole goat from the goat shop and then used the goat to bring Miguel to the Alpha Base and in her infinite wisdom decided to bring it through the horse uh, bit of the... I didn't think it would fit through the normal door. <laughs> yep, yeah, and so it, absolute chaos has reigned. And, um, but... Now, Padrin is also a snake, and, um, but... We have a pet snake, Miguel. Because why wouldn't you be? <laughs> and the snake is also mummified in Maria's bandages. Yeah. <laughs> and extremely high on the drug she's given it. We're really good at this. I leave you guys for, like, several weeks. We start bandaging oh. snakes and stuff. Really. No. Right. <laughs> well, but, well, the episode that that covered was entitled "When the Cleric Misses the Last Fight Scene." So. Okay, so basically, to cover up the fact that Onyx isn't here. Um, we'll simply say that Onyx, being a ranger, has volunteered to stay behind to help tame Miguel. Miguel? Um... Cousin Miguel is the giant constrictor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I gotta add Miguel now as one of our official pets. Mm -hmm. uh, under us. Well, t taming will take a certain length of time, depending upon um, the animal handling checks of... Um, of Connor plus whoever else wants to help. So in this regard, um, Onyx will be jumping in. But if you guys want to sort of assist with feeding, etc., then that will help bring Didn't Miguel roll, over to. I rolled quite high on it. Oh, hell yeah! I want to feed a snake. That's into. Um, that's been taken into account. Okay, so basically, you guys are in the middle of doing your um, your shopping trip for prepping for your journey. Um, it's quite a lengthy journey, and I will admit 100%, um, being the idiot at maths that I am, I completely screwed up the measurements for how long it will actually take, and how many um, rations, etc. you'll need. So we'll just simply say that you, whatever it is that you got is enough to cover the journey. Okay, cool, cool. Um, but you still need to uh, get armament, ammo, that sort of stuff. And also there's the um, storyline with uh, Kashan's brother, which still needs to be um, resolved. It's sort of mid-afternoon now, so the floor is now yours. Yeah. 
Do we want to sort out Kashan's brother? I mean, yep, sure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> then Padron the Snake comes over. Oh, I like brothers. I like brothers. I don't have a brother, but I have a. I now have a big brother over here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Please for now stay away from the snake. But he's a snake. I'm a snake. But what if he eats you? Yeah, I don't like being eaten. No. <laughs> so, so Scott comes over. He's completely nonplussed about the snake. And for some reason, um, he's just simply so passive with it that the snake doesn't actually regard him as a threat to the point that he's able to just simply walk past it. Well, if you guys are going to be dealing with your brother, um, but I think we agreed Katie would consider taking, taking gladiators on under her wing. Uh, she's the only one who doesn't have any sort of alpha apprentices, shall we say. So you may want to go ask her to tag along with you guys. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Uh, but they're inside. So, um, Take what you see in there with a pinch of salt. Do I want to go inside? Uh, so Scott thinks about this and sort of chews his lip and he's like, Give me an intelligence check. <laughs> I really should have and then face. walks away. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but he basically chases after mm -hmm. Ass to try and get her under control. Probably be fine. What could go wrong? <laughs> uh, flat intelligence? Well. <laughs> okay, so whatever um, role that he wanted you to do, uh, you appear to have passed because he he's now lost interest. So, Padwin saw mm -hmm. like Slithers is along with you, leading you the way uh, to the back door. Sure. Oh, well, Padwin. <clears throat> Padwin actress. Okay, so Onyx will go over to the snake. Um, but Elimbo, what are you doing with Frank? What am I doing with Frank? That's the question. Would you like to mount him? On one of the horses? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, do that. Okay. Charlotte, what are you doing? I will follow around, help out with the whole situation that we're going on. Okay. So I'll just casting around the snake, not getting too close, but also like not acting nervous or anything uh, towards the building. Sure. All right. So, Padman leads the way in as a snake. Um, but, so you enter the alpha base. A stick is sitting on the couch, and he appears to be polishing his helmet, his actual helmet, not his other helmet. Um, and it actually reveals that dis despite his um, really sort of stoic appearance, he's actually got a very messy head of sandy blonde hair. Um, the tattoo artist appears to have departed. Um, Jason, Katie, and Jen are all sitting around a small table, and they all appear to be in a heated discussion, with George standing over them in dignified silence. It's a uh, You saw sort of walk in mid conversation, but uh, what you're able to hear uh, when you walk in is Jen saying, Your balls aren't on fire. And Jason goes, Damn it, Katie, I need you to set my balls on fire. Again? I did it last time. Like, you wouldn't jump at the chance to play with his balls. And it's not that, it's my last spell slot. Oh, come on, we're about to beat this thing. Speaking of, Padwin, come over here and be at the Tarask. Okay, Auntie. So, uh, Padwin basically slithers over, and. Gotten what thing this comes under? And promptly transforms into a miniature Tarask. Ah! Fine, okay, I'll use my turn to set his balls on fire. And I'll hold my action to use my balls when she does. Alright, fine, you set Wait. his balls on you set his balls on fire. Yes, I now use my balls on the Tarask. You can only use one ball. Uh, I believe Master Scroll has the dual wielding skill, Mistress. Ah, but you have your sword in your hand, so you can only use your offhand. Fuck. Um, okay, I drop my sword to use my other ball. 
Dropping your sword is an action, sir. Shit! Oh, crap, so I only have one ball. Yep. Serves you right for, using your, for pulling out your sword before your balls are ready. Damn it! Fine. I use my one ball on the Tarrasque. Aha! But I get plus one because I have big balls. He then promptly rolls the dice onto the floor. That's a three. Seriously? <coughs> I wasted my last spell on that? No, so Jen basically folds her arms in disappointment and goes, You missed the Tarrasque, and now it uses its five attacks on you. Four. She rolls various dice. 148 damage plus 56 damage to Jason because he was swallowed. Great, I'm dead. Me too. Rah! God damn it, Jason. Well, I'm sorry. Well, what did we learn today? Always pre -prepare, pre prepare our spells before we battle the monster of the apocalypse. Rah! It's a great conversation. To walk into. That one comes over to you as the trust. We're playing prisons and um, lethal fire breathing lizards. Favorite role-playing TPRG. <laughs> yes, we're using it as uh, something of a training exercise, because unfortunately, someone doesn't want to play their actual role, so it's a bit um, a bit superfluous. Yeah, like we're ever going to fight Tarask in in today's climate? Rah, I'm a Tarask. Oh, that's foreshadowing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I like foreshadowing. I like foreshadowing. Rah! Ah, very scary. Well, I've been very, very scary. Oh my, oh, goodness. <laughs> so, what's all the commotion outside? Uh, we have a cousin called Miguel. Oh, okay. Um, was he here to join the Alphas? Uh, I mean, good luck <laughs> getting him to join. Oh, so he's not going to be joining your team? I, I, I'm... Uh, Kishan, do you want to lead it? Oh, oh. Shan has fallen asleep. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. If... if if he's cousins, if he's cousin snake, does that mean I get a cousin Tarask? Uh, um, no, Tyson. <laughs> I, I think we've run out of those. No. Oh. But I want to, but I want to have a cousin snake. And a cousin Tarask. I'm sure we might be able to find one somewhere for you. Yay. Okay, so, um... David has then taken that uh, time to disappear. Um, this is probably going to be a conversation that he's going to be leading in, so do we want to take a quick drinks break? Yeah. Okay, so is everyone back now? I believe so. Uh, yes. Lovely. Okay, so... Um, yeah, it, it was basically decided that uh, this conversation would be very Kishan-driven, so that's why we're waiting for you. So, um, so yeah, if you want to lead the conversation in asking Katie. Uh, yeah, so, uh, are they, are they done with that conversation about balls? <laughs> I don't want to just interject. <laughs> uh, the conversation hasn't happened yet. All right, okay. <laughs> right, uh, well, yeah. oh well, I right. did appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Jason falls now on fire. I don't know if I think I missed this. Oh, we're just doing training simulations. Learn to be concerned about. Oh, okay. Well, Uncle Jason well, used fireball. Well, as long as I'm not going to ruin anything. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, I'm, just, I'm having to calm down my friend outside because all he heard was balls 50 times and then I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, so, Katie. Scott says you're the only one without any apprentices at the moment. Um, I just so happen to know a few warriors that might be up to the task. So, in case you're looking a little bit uneasy, and so, 
Um, but then, before she can sort of... I are seriously? You can, say, you can sort of see that she's uh, considering saying no, but then Jen basically just steps in and says, We need... I've been trying to get you to get in for for years now. Now you're taking this as an order. So, Katie then uh, sighs and gives a very, um, a very luxurious stretch, the sort of thing that you would uh, really only see in sort of like, um, uh, put sort of anime style show, and then t jumps up and, uh, um, put, and then just sorts the stuff out. So, okay, might as well go now then. Can I come? No, Padwin, you need to put, you need to stay here and get packed for your trip with Daddy. Okay. Can I stay as stressed? Or, oh, or, oh, I could be a mimic. I like mimics. Nobody likes mimics. Alright then. So, where are, where are these famed warriors, as you put them? Ooh, we're putting us on the town of them. There's an inn. Yes, uh, put... We sent them with, uh, with, with Sherlock and John, didn't we? Yes, mm -hmm. and he gave you, um, uh, like, the address and everything. You, um, but you're not entirely sure, you don't know the place exactly, but, um, but you know how to get there. Alright, that's cool. All right then, lead the way before we run out of daylight. Probably even show. All right, so. Uh, ba -da -da -da. Okay, so you guys are obviously here. The place that you're tr you're getting to is this building here. So it's a very straightforward journey. Okay, so. Um, are you just heading straight there? Is there anything else we need to do beforehand, anybody? Uh, not in regards to this, um, but there are... You do have other things in your to-do list, but as for getting this completed, no, there's nothing else for you to do other than just go there. Well, let's head out then. Send them ahead and go and grab some cake for everyone. <laughs> How many people are we uh, meeting? Uh, I believe it's five, I think. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to run. I'll be like, you go ahead and I'll meet you soon. I'm going to run to the market and buy five pieces of Rocky Road cake. Okay. Um, or whatever. Okay, so if you want to... Uh, I'll say um, five silver, one per, one for each cake. And then I'll, I'll run and meet them again. Okay. So, uh, you journey out to the city through the Western Gate, um, but you pass a number of large uh, buildings there outside the walls. One appears to be a church of some kind, another shop called Spelunking, which seems to be some sort of antiquity store, and finally an inn that sits overlooking the river crossing. Shall we check the church to see if a kind of shepherd's hiding there? <laughs> well, I hope not. <laughs> is that being serious or? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just told was just throwing ideas out. <laughs> or we can go find me a new goat. <laughs> this is just never silence. <laughs> <laughs> How about we find you a goat later? Yeah. <laughs> we might find one in the antiquity store. Okay, so you're having a look at the spelunking shop. I'd like to personally, but we can do it after if we need to. Uh, I mean, we've already sort of grabbed Katie, so maybe we should get this done first and then go to the spelunking I'll say, shop. yeah, it might be a good idea. Okay, well, well Katie um, put stretches luxuriously, and she, do she does it she does in a way that... that, that doesn't she? Yeah, she... Um, <laughs> and she, put, she does it in such a way that it very much raises up her clothes to show off her... Um, her stomach, yeah, in a very, um, I don't want to say pornographic, because that's what the level that uh, Frank's at, but a very flirtatious way. Um, but she says, oh no, I can, I can wait, don't worry. I don't get out much. You want anything from there? Um, I'll take the cake. Okay. Um, I'll take the cake. Um, 
I don't know, it seems quite interesting. So let me. Okay, so the shop is a very basic building with a window along the front of the shop which is under an immaculately polished sign that reads Spellunking. So spell dash U N K I N G. Magic without a price. The window is fl is basically floor to ceiling, um, but which allows you to view inside the shop without any uh, sort of problems. I did a last minute resizing of this map, hence why everything is so massive. But because um, uh, um, the measurements I initially did weren't compatible with the size of the map for Roll Twenty, but instead of resizing it, I just simply stretched everything out. Hence why. Everything looks so weird. So, um, but. And we look so bad. This shop is huge. <laughs> it's made for a giant! <laughs> <laughs> you should be fine, Anchor Shop. Okay. The shop, the door to the shop is a very heavy wooden door with gold and silver stubs throughout the wood and a handle made of a brilliantly shiny metal. Oh, we just walked through it. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, it's a very expensive door. As you push on the door, some invisible force takes over and the door opens for you. A gentle tinkling of a bell sounds throughout the shop. A somewhat hoarse voice from the other side of the shop goes, Ah, welcome. Welcome to Spelunking. I am Varon Karalana, at your service. The man behind the counter is a gaunt half-elf dressed in a grey and purple doublet that uh, sort of pins him up as a member of the nobility. He's Marilla, a... it's a cousin. We're we not all related. <laughs> but you have pointy ears. <laughs> ah, what was his name again? Uh, Varon Kvalana. Varon... Oh, I can't say that. Varon That's... Uh, now let me get the alphabet up. That's V for very, like, Rakona um. Shepherd. <laughs> That's C. Can't you see that's Ricola Shepherd? <laughs> that's R for Ricola Shepherd. <laughs> yep. That's A for R is Ricola Shepherd. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's N for Nobody Hates Ricola Shepherd. Yep. Yeah. That's A for Ah, it's Ricola Shepherd. Yeah. L for Look, it's Ricola Shepherd. Then <laughs> A for Ah, it's Ricola Shepherd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so as you basically look at the the guy behind the counter, you can see he is extraordinarily pale and rather unhealthily th uh, thin. Please feel free to peruse. Ask me for any information. Although I will say. What is on the shelves is my entire stock, I must point out. Okay, so Casey sort of comes in. She's looking around very sceptically, and she basically says to you, Be careful. We've seen places like this all the time. They're usually a front for something. I'm just going to stare at this guy. Hello, my lizardy friend. What can I suggest for you? Are you sure you're not related to her? <laughs> oh, I'm fairly sure, my friend. My family generation goes back uh, thousands and thousands of years in a very well thought out and pre planned family tree, which has obviously happened. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I'll approach as well. Fair enough. You're like, really? Um... Yes, there's no way that I was a last minute addition to the DM's trail of thought based upon a YouTube short that he saw just this morning. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, uh, I'm Marilla. <laughs> uh, do you originate from the place where we live? <laughs> no, no, I come from I come from the Sword Coast, my friend. Oh. So if you're not related to her, what kind of elf are you? Uh, I, my friend, am a half-elf. That doesn't answer my question. 
It means that I'm half elf and half something else. So what are you half something else of? Irritated. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for my friend. Um, no, uh, no, no, no you... need, no need. Feel free to peruse the items. I'm sure you'll Do find you... something that you'll like. Do you have perhaps any potions? Yes, yes indeed. Let me get up the document which the DM accidentally deleted. Here we are. <laughs> Yes, on the table just over there, any points. Uh, but there's potions of heroism, giant strength, and a personal favourite, invulnerability. Can I scrutinise the potions? Sure. Give me an investigation. Really hard. Like, proper scrutinising these things. Now I can roll. Not easy. Twenty one, not natural. Okay. Um but I mean you're more poisoner than you are potion maker, but as far as you can tell, these are They're not gonna kill ya. Yeah, these are one hundred percent genuine. I mean to, I mean obviously your point of reference isn't great, but you can I can tell they're not gonna kill us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. I can tell you the potion bottles won't kill you. Indeed, indeed. In fact, that red one there will stop anybody from killing you for a short time. How much? Uh, what? What? She asked how, how, much, how much. How much for the red one? And I'm going to pick it up. And can I do an investigation check to make sure that it's legitimate? Well, I told you it doesn't do, kill yeah, you. Yeah, do, do it with advantage because Tortum has already yeah. uh, had some success. Thank God, that was a natural one. <laughs> Still not great, a nine. Okay, um, you don't see any reason why. Sorry, you don't see any reasons to indicate there would be anything else. As far as you can tell, this is this is genuine. It's a very ornate bottle as well. Oh. So like the, it's got a cork in it, and the cork is then sealed with golden wax, as opposed to just something cheap. It's a very expensive looking item. Yeah, how much for the one that will stop us from dying for a short while? Oh, I'll tell you... I'm in a generous mood, so we'll say 50 gold. <laughs> you alright? Okay, so Charlotte, 50 gold. Hey, uh... Can I get uh, an inside check from you, please? Oh, I... Oh, I'm getting 100% ripped off here, I think. 19. Okay. You know that if this is a potion of heroism, you are getting this for a ridiculously low price. The sort of money you'd be paying for something like this would be uh, in the tens of thousands of gold. Let me confirm with my friends a moment, and I'm going to go back up to where uh, Kashan and Katie are, and, uh, and I'll be like, is this legit? They said 50 gold, but this is a really expensive potion if it's real. So Casey will, Casey will take it from you and uh, um, do her own investigation. Okay, she got a nat 20. And I was like, yeah, strangely enough, this is a potion of invulnerability. Um, it seems to be mixed in with some sort of, um, some sort of red fruit, but I think that's because it, the actual potion of hearing of um, invulnerability is actually quite bitter. I'm going to just show up to go and go, what's the scam? I stand on this table and I point at his face and my finger. Oh, there's no scam, my friends. Uh, it's, uh, it's my life's purpose to Does give... someone uh, not have a truth to tell? It's my life's purpose to ensure that uh, it isn't only the rich and wealthy who are able to obtain items of note, shall we say. After all, 
tis the young, the lower down people who do the most work, as it were, the, the dangerous work. Why don't I believe you? I would assume that's because you're a very distrusting lizard. Although, I do have something that might interest you as well. You see that book? Over there. Next to it, with the basket. Those are spell gems. Each one of those holds a specific spell. And depending on which one you, you use will depend upon the power of the spell. It's a perfect addition for wizards and sorcerers such as yourself. How do you know I'm a wizard? You dress like a wizard. I'm a very old, very wise elf, you must understand. I'm just going to look at my cloak. But I'm wearing a cult cloak. Yes, most cultists are wizards and sorcerers, my friend. I don't know if it's cult. Wasn't that cult? I found it! Ha! <laughs> Maybe I stole it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a look at the gems? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to see if the catch this guy out. I'll investigate the gems, but I won't move my throat because I see the catch. Okay. Scrutinise the gems. Okay, investigation, please. Oh, investigation or arcana. Whichever is best for you. I can't look That was not Arcana. Can't flip and roll the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone down the list, 16. Okay. Right, so you can basically see that there's three types of uh, gems in here. Yeah. Um, put, there's two amber, two bloodstone and one jade. Uh, the jade is the most valuable, which is capable of storing a fifth level spell. That's very cool. Yeah, but it would be a single-use spell. Oh yes, yes, of course. Do I want to pay that much for a single-use spell? Well, it's only 50 gold, my friend. Question? Yes, of course. Thank you, do. It's everything yeah. 50 gold, that's all you've said. Oh no, no, no. <coughs> oh no, 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 of course not. The prices do vary. For example, that bow over there is a dragon wing bow, that's 100 gold. Or the, over there, he points to the book, that's the book of exalted deeds, the best friend of clerics and paladins. Uh, but spend time going through that book and you'll become immensely powerful. Can I steal it. open it and one of the pages to see if it is what he's saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, investigation, please. Okay. Um, that's cocky. Uh, 12. Okay. Um, you don't know if this is, um, the actual book, but you know that this is a book of legend. Uh, but if it is, like, legit. Basically, the Book of Exalted Deeds only exists in one place, at any one time, in the entire multiverse. Um, it's but, Doctor Strange! Yeah, effectively. Um, but it's also impossible to copy. So either this is just, like, a complete, um, uh, somebody has basically written a book from scratch and has called it the Book of Exalted Deeds, or this is the, the legit copy. As you put, go out to touch it, um, you can actually feel radiant energy come off the book. Friend, um, for the ornate bottle and apparently this grand book of exalted deeds. Mm hmm. How much did you say the book was? I'll do the book. 
Right, so the the potion I'll do for fifty gold, and then the book of exalted deeds I'll do for a thousand. What if you just buy the book? Is that fifty gold then? We might need to go to a bank. Um. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid you will. Um, I was uh, ripped off by those banking clan guilds several decades ago, so I only take coin. Are you sure there's no deeds you need any help with? Some cleaning? Uh, um. Okay, so I'm assuming that while you're saying this, you're looking around for things to do. Yeah, I'm trying to just get the price down just a tiny bit, a okay. little cheekily. Okay, so can I get a perception check from you while you're doing that? Uh, of course you can. I still don't trust him. 19, me neither. There's something odd about this place. Okay, right, so as you're looking around, you notice in the ceiling um, put, are tiny pieces of crystal. And they're, sp they're spaced very symmetrically in five foot spaces. So if you basically. S <sighs> Can I go investigate a crystal? So if you basically Good think. Job, me up. If you basically think where all of the squares cross over, there's a crystal in the ceiling. I want to investigate a crystal. Well, I'll tell you what, given that we are apparently related. I will knock down the price to 900 for the book. Kashan, give me a boost. I want to check those crystals. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, see. So uh, yeah, uh, not particularly high, um, but, but it's high for me. With, uh, with her on your shoulders, she's able to reach up to the ceiling. Um, but again, I'll do an Akana check for you. I got plus eight on Akana. I've got your profile here. So. She just she keeps closing my thing. Well, the wrong wheel dice, but more. Okay, with nineteen, um, you can immediately identify these as fragments of a crystal ball. They're crystal ball fragments. I don't know what a crystal ball does. Or do I? <coughs> um, say with that you do. Um, put crystal balls are mainly used for divination magic being able to see things from afar, that sort of thing. Why do you have broken up crystal balls stuck in your ceiling? Oh, my friend, I had I broke crystal ball whenever I first moved here. I figured we'd make a nice decoration piece. Uh, 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 you can still uh, use them. You're doing something fishy. Yeah. You're spying on people! Am I? How interesting. Ah, uh, maybe we should think about these items and go to the bank so we can get our cash toward them. And I just look at you like, kind of like a we, we should go kind of thing to, before we accuse and get caught. Well, if you're, if you're going to do that, at least take the, you can I take it by the potion. I, I, I really don't. Uh, none of us have that much money on us. Uh, we didn't think we were going to be going shopping today, but we, we, we probably will be back with the money. Very well, very well. I'm open uh, for all opening hours and I don't really go anywhere, so feel free to come back anytime. Wonderful, we will. But before you go, my, my very large friends over there at the back, I do have several weapons which might uh, take your fancy. Oh, do you? Yes, indeed. Uh, that great sword on the table there, that's a plus three great sword. And the scimitar next to it, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that is a scimitar of speed. Very legendary items. What sort of cost would these items have? Oh, let's say 500 gold. Interesting. Also, those shields over there, that's a sentinel shield and a battering shield. Very, very useful for fighting people such as yourself. But also, I have several rings which might take your fancy.
Well, I'm not with one for jewelry, but please, what? Well, if you have a closer look, you'll see a ring of jumping, a ring of of Jin summoning, a ring of Earth Elemental Command, a ring of truth telling, a ring of mind shielding, spell storing, regeneration, Hang on a second. and put evasion. The, put the truth telling ring on. I need a bigger. Calm down, man. Prove that it works. Of course. Which one would you like to test? <coughs> the truth telling ring on. Wow. Oh, no. Maya, stop screaming, please. Okay, so put. Um, do you want to put the ring on? No, I want him to put the ring on. Unfortunately, the, ri the ring of truth telling doesn't exactly force me to tell the truth, it makes the perceiver more likely to be able to detect tr truth and lies with them. My, my elven friend, you you would also happen to be a cleric, wouldn't you? Um, I, I follow a deity, I suppose, yes. Well then, that necklace over there would be of great interest to you. That is a necklace of prayer beads. You are very pushy for a sale. Am I? Or maybe I'm just a good salesman. I'm going to go stand on his desk again in his face. <coughs> Did I cast detect magic? Mm-hmm. Sure. And see balls in the <laughs> if I can figure out whether these are... Oh, maybe, hang on. Maybe I watch that one. Maybe, um... And instead, can I do... Ba -ba -ba -ba. I haven't prepared my spells for the day. This was really bad of me. Hmm. Um, can I do instead detect evil and good on the plate? Sure. Remind me of what that does. Shows who's evil and who's good. Yeah. Basically, if he's an enemy, if he's a bad guy. Okay. Um, but he is coming up, for, sort of like um. Uh, for <coughs> so sort, of, sort of like on the bad side of neutral, um, but. Uh, the rest of you are coming up with your own alignments, and ironically, you notice that Katie is sort of oscillating between being chaotic evil and chaotic good. Okay. In terms of him and uh, the items around you, you're getting a very strong sense of neutrality. Where did the items come from? Where is their paperwork of provenance? Well, paperwork is a banking <laughs> item, my friend. I don't do that. All sales are final, and I, and I don't do <laughs> refunds. Are you doing a tax dodge? <coughs> of course, of are course. Are they broken goods? Oh, no, they're not broken, my friend. Are they stolen? They may have been stolen once, but... There you go. He stole them. But in all honesty, my friend, does that really matter? You're getting these for a fantastic price. Your buy, friends, basically. Buy, buy these in the city, and you will put, pay a hundred times their price. Maybe even more. He's a fence. I take offence at that. Shut up, fence. Offence <laughs> <coughs> for who? <laughs> who do you work for? I work for myself, my friend. Who now, do you fence goods for? I fence goods for myself. I pay my own way. So you stole your own goods? Yes, I steal my own goods for myself, yes. <laughs> Are you confused yet? No. <laughs> oh, good. Now are you going to buy something or are you going to get out of my shop? Are you going to be honest with us and tell us why you're dodgy? <coughs> I'm dodgy because society has labelled me so. Well, you're not exactly helping your case. 
Why should I help my, my own case? Because you're just proving the fact you're dodgy. Yes. And but you sell so dodgy goods. And I'm going to tell everybody never to shop here. Feel free, my friend. Feel free. But just know, but just know, reputation isn't such an important thing outside of this city. I'll buy the potion. Very good, very good. That'll be fifty gold. Okay. Okay. So as you hand over the money, um, you notice that instead of him putting in something like a registry, um, <coughs> he um, he opens like a little hatch in the, his desk and pours the coins in. And they seem to go somewhere underground. Very well, very well. The potion is yours. The potion is yours. And it was a potion of invulnerability, right? Yep. Cool, cool, cool. So it's got to underground his house somewhere. Can I get put um, inside from all of you? <coughs> inside? Yeah. I've got that twenty. <laughs> Sorry, it just had to be done. Oh my goodness, zero. <laughs> How did you roll a zero? I got a nat one and I get minus one. What? <laughs> and that's um, six. <laughs> uh, 19. Okay, right. Um, you're the only one who saw that works this out. But you, what, but you can see that the math just isn't here. <clears throat> right. The prices that he's selling these items for wouldn't even cover the rent on this place. He makes money elsewhere. Money laundry. Hmm. I don't know what to do. Um, I, I'm going to thank him and take the potion. I'm going to go back up here and, and just whisper, something about this place doesn't make sense. The prices should not be this cheap. I, I, I don't know what's going on. In case you just saw muscles, it's probably best we leave them. Do you know what's going on, Katie? No, this is very suspicious. Is there a back of the shop? Like, from the outside? Um, as far as you can tell, there's only one way in or out, aside from smashing a window. Okay. I wondered if we could have, like, spied on him doing something weird on a window. Okay, so, Alumba Kashan, are you interested in buying anything? <coughs> uh, I'm good. Uh, I'll ask if he has anything suited for at all? Well, I've got several uh, weapons that you may be able to use, but I feel someone like yourself would be more interested in a magical item of some sort. These rings would be most def most definitely be useful for someone like yourself. You have a you have a strong personality. Might I recommend the Ring of Earth Elemental Command? That went Ooh. very wrong when you summoned one, sure. Yes, exactly. I just walk out past him. Seems Not oddly specific to my situation. I would take the red flag at all, and I'll say yes, <coughs> I'll buy it. Excellent. That will be a hundred gold, please. On my way out, I sort of like, is he any <coughs> baskets or barrels lying around? Right, um, I'll do an investigation from you in a moment. Okay, so you, you hand over the gold? Yes. Okay, so if you want to add um, <coughs> um, a ring of element of Earth Elemental Command. I mean, I can add it for you if you like. Uh, if you have it. There. Sure. Give me a moment. Uh, <coughs> oh, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Specifically, our thermal? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, should you find yourself in the proximity of an earth elemental, my friend? You'll be able to dominate it with your sheer will, and if you t take part in defeating it, 
then you, my friend, you will gain some of its uh, finer abilities. See? It doesn't even summon it. You just get to control one that's already there, you've got. And summon my own with some beans, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Okay, so like um, with Morela, he takes um, uh, th the gold that you've given him and he pours it through a hatch that's in his desk. Can I look through the hatch? Uh, th it's one of those things where he pulls the door upwards so the wooden bit is blocking you. So the only way you'll be able to see is to get over the desk and look down. Okay. <coughs> I mean, you can still try that if you want. Yeah. Okay. Can I stand on the desk and try the that hole? Oh, that's 20. Um, but you can see it actually goes down quite far to the point that it's completely dark, so you can't actually see where the money's gone. But it's needlessly deep. Why is the hole so deep? Why are you looking in my hole? I didn't give you permission to look down my hole. Or up well, my hole. Tough. <laughs> well, now you're up for something dodgy. <clears throat> well, in that case, my lizard friends, you can take your leave. Not before I take your... Basket? <laughs> I'm just going to take a basket <coughs> out. An empty basket. Just an empty basket? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so are all of you leaving the shop now? <coughs> I am. We. Oui. Yeah. Okay, so can I get wisdom saving for us from each of you, please? God. Uh, can I cast. Um, um, the, the, the spell, you know, the spell, um, bless, at level two on everyone. Sure. Um, so everyone gets a D4, uh, three people, so, um, Olumba, Kashan, and Torda get a D4 to their saving throw. Okay. Unfortunately, in Torben's case, that didn't help. <laughs> oh no. Because well. oh, they for a one. <coughs> oh no. And the rest of you? 14. Uh, I got a 13. Kishan? What am I going to Wisdom saving for her. Oh god. Plus a d4. Uh, okay, I'm feeling quite wise today. Uh, with the d4. Hey, that is. That's twenty-one. Okay, you didn't. <coughs> you didn't buy anything, did you? Uh, I didn't. didn't. Okay, right. So, but all of you feel a sort of like tug on the back of your neck as you leave the shop. Um, but in the case of Kasham, <coughs> um, but. Right, so all of you feel a tug on the back of your neck, and um, put, you sit, and it just seems to just immediately disappear as soon as you sort of cross the threshold, and you feel normal again. What just happened? Okay, so what? Well, oh, yeah, In case he's looking at the shop door, which is now closed behind you, is that no, that was weird. Katie, play a little part. Yeah, I don't know if I... Okay. Okay. So now that you've left the shop, what would you like to do? I want to know what he did. We can figure out later. We should go speak to Kishun. Um, if you want to find out, you can try an archon check. Okay. I'm guessing I got it because I failed the save, not because I bought something, because I didn't buy anything. Yeah, you got a four on save. Okay, so you got 14. You know that something uh, magical has happened, and given that uh, there's crystal balls in the ceiling, you can guess that it's, it's some sort of divination spell. He's been spying on us. Or he's controlling us like puppets. Okay, so if any of you... 
suddenly get an urge to murder the other, can you please give us advance advance warning? Okay, she says. Uh, I, of course, though, I feel like I'd be very out of character for a few of us. And she, lo she looks at uh, Kashan and Lumber in particular. Yeah. They killed the not each other. Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, Charlotte, did you add the potion of vulnerability to your inventory? I have, yes. Okay. Alright, so you're carrying on to, um, uh, put to the end? Okay, yeah, I think it's right at the end. Alright. <clears throat> Okay. Right, so eventually, so after this strange episode with the, um, with the inn, sorry, with the shop, uh, you arrive at the inn. It's a high quality establishment with a stone foundation, with wooden walls and a thatch roof, and it's the size of several houses put together. There's a black metal sign which hangs above the doorway, and the sign is an image of a, um, out of sort of like the metal, of a man holding a chain. And from this hangs a square with the ho with holes in it that form the words the famous chain inn. Why is a chain famous? Oh, well, maybe he was trying to establish a uh, put a network chain and slot ran out of money. That makes sense. Okay. So you can see at a glance that this road is very well travelled in both directions. However, in front of you, the flow of traffic appears to have stunted somewhat. As you sort of approach the inn itself, you can see that the outer walls of the inn are being used to hold up people who are passing by. <coughs> the local guards are acting as a roadblock, preventing people from passing by, whilst three people appear to be interrogating civilians in small groups. You, you can see that the people asking questions are dressed in black leather in in three but similarly distinctive different so in black leather that are in similar but distinctively different styles um, what do you guys have to do? what are their distinct styles? Um, bear with me it's people who want to be red paladins without being red. Oh, God. It's not uh, brilliant pictures, but uh, I should give you an idea of what they're wearing. So one's in the sort of um, in the sleeveless t-shirt, so in the sleeveless top. Another one is decked in like... But, uh, belts and uh, met uh, metal studs, and the other one is um, dressed up in some, uh, sort of leather robes. Uh, do they look a bit like red paladins? Uh, you're not getting that vibe from them, no. Um, okay. but mainly because the one in the sleeveless t-shirt is an elf. She is interrogating the women of the local group. Uh, the tiefling male is talking to the men of the group, and the human is talking to the guards. The human sees you, dismisses the guards, and starts making his way over to you. At which I think he sees us. At which point you hear Casey say, Oh, shit. Don't say anything about Padron, don't lie to them. They'll know if you do. And then she sort of hides uh, behind... Um, she sort of, sh she sort of pushes... Um, a lumber to one side and hides in between uh, you and Kashan. I don't think Katie likes these people. No, oh, don't lie and don't mention Padwin. Oh, mommy. So yeah. the, hu the human comes over to you and he doesn't seem to notice that Katie has slunk away. He looks over, you, over all of you like very individually for um, quite a lengthy period of time. And you can see, as he does so, he doesn't have eyeballs, but his eyes have been replaced with blue whiffs of smoke that seem to swirl around within the confines of the eye socket. Do 
Do you and want he's to... a human, and people think fine with Do you want to say anything to to him while he does this, or you go away from him to finish? Can I wave my hand really fast in front of his face so he sees it? Like this. <laughs> so he's, he takes in a deep breath, uh, and then he bows slightly, and goes, Alphas. And as he talks, his voice seem, um, seems to be multiple voices speaking at once. So he's got his own distinct accent, and then echoing what he says is, is another voice that sort of like reson resonates quite dis uh, distinctively. He's possessed. And I'm going to sort of like go rooted through Maria's pocket for a set of beads of some kind and <laughs> wave them on his face. Alphas. Oh, so, yeah, what are you saying? I, I just smacked all of his hand away from my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Stop digging around in there, that's Frank's job. <laughs> Alphas, we greet you both as friends and allies. And he bows again. When did we go into league with people possessed? Uh, you seem to have us at a disadvantage. Indeed. We are the Olmist Inquisition. This one, he points to himself, is of the Mindfire. We are hunters of all things evil and dark. We seek to eat to end evil before it gains further footholds in this we world. We are a bit down behind then, aren't ya? Oh, yes. Perhaps you can help us. At this point, the other ones come over. There's a serial killer running around somewhere. We do not trouble ourselves with mortal concerns. That's our, evil. Our concerns are of the demonic planes, Ravenloft and such like. Then stop letting yourself get possessed then. So the other two come over and you can see that the female elf has a giant two-handed sword on her back, like anime style in terms of sizing. Hey look, a number, it rivals yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the tiefling has belts all over his body which hang various books and then so, and also bags which have scrolls in them. She, she then speaks, again with her own accent, but with the same resonating voice. This one is of the sword, and then the tiefling speaks, and this one is of the tome. Did you say tome or toe? Tome. <laughs> 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 tome. looks like looking at his, looking at his feet, though. <laughs> Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? I am Marilla. I'm just gonna like grunt, roll the eyes. I remember. Yeah. I don't talk to possessed people. <laughs> Though our orders do not see eye to eye, we stand together in the face of evil. We have received word. And so they're basically talking in such a way that they're saying a few words and then the person next to them is then carrying on the sentence. They are definitely possessed. It's dirty, you spilled your drink all over it. We have received word that a demonic summoning has occurred within this city. Its power has been immense. We can only assume that the Chondra is, of a, is a necromancer of immense power. A portal to Ravenloft itself has opened and a great beast of Avernus was brought forth. More of this we do not know. Perhaps you can assist us. Um, from where? A portal from where, huh? Ravenloft. We believe it was a three-headed Cerberus. Oh, really? How do we not know they're not possessed themselves? Um, she said that and then she walked away. So, <laughs> so I think it's just trying to be dramatic. Well, what, what do you know about the Cerberus? We know that it was summoned, but we do not know more than that. When a conjuring such as this occurs, it creates a fracture in nature, and we, we can detect these fractures. 
In fact, that's very powerful magic. Um, you just sit here, Casey, um, but I'll just whisper to you, don't lie to them. Going to. Uh, how did you gain this power? It, it's a very fascinating power. Demons gave it to them. They're demons. <laughs> not, uh, not quite. The almost Inquisition was founded 800 years ago by, by by friends of Strad von Zarevich. Oh, not good. When the, when the man fell to evil, his friends who he helped escape when he was when he was vampire but still on the path of good, he allowed uh, friends of his to escape. And to avenge his falling, they founded the Almost Inquisition. And we are possessed with fragments of their souls. That that is um really quite fascinating. Um uh, you deal with these things a lot? Yes, our job is never done. Evil never sleeps. But do you know of this beast that was summoned? I've heard of Cerberus. So what was that? I, 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 I believe we've heard of Cerberus, yes. Do, the, do any of the others want to get involved in this? Help me, please. <laughs> I can't lie, I'm terrified. We have recently slain a Cerberus. Perhaps it was the same one you were looking for. Indeed. It was fortunate that your order was here to prevent such a thing. Did you slay the beast? We did. Indeed. You must be very powerful warriors of the Alpha Core. He bows to you again. What of the Chandra? I'm afraid I don't know where he is right now. Okay. We got eight by his dog. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm being yogurted. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, sorry, where were we? Um, we've recently slain a Cerberus. Indeed, indeed. What of the Chandra? Oh, uh, uh, as, uh, he turned into a snake, and I'm not sure where he is right now. Indeed. Indeed. It was just there, so we killed it. Oh, we would ask you that should you find uh, any trace of this necromancer snake, you let us know oh, straight away. Snake. If we, find if we run into again, we will surely try to. Indeed, then. Then we thank you, Alphas. May the blessings of Cosima, Ansel, and Tristan watch over you. And they, they all bow in perfect sync to you, and then t turn around on the spot, and uh, go back to the crowd. Do they want a picture of that snake? As they leave, you notice the one that's called the sword, and turns around and casts a lingering gaze over you and then travels back to, uh, to join her comrades. They're possessed. By they the are demon. possessed. So Casey like, lets out a, a deep sort of exhale and says, so, Oh god, this is fucked. Come on, let's get this over with and we need to get back. So we don't need to exercise the demons that are in these poor people. I think of them more as um, but warrior saints as opposed to demons. Um, Marilla, do you want to explain what a saint is to, um, uh, to Tordum? As we enter, yes. Uh, it's a, a divine being, not like a demon, kind of completely the opposite. Uh, they guide me and they're wonderful and we shouldn't dislike them. I thought that was angels. <laughs> Stop it. Your religions are very 
confusing. Um, uh, yeah, a little bit, indeed. Okay, so Alumbo, are you uh, taking Frank inside with you? Yeah. All right. So Casey comes in live with you. Kashan, are you going in? Oh, yeah. Well, I should hope he's going in. It's his brother we're here to see. Okay, so inside is extraordin is extremely roomy. And there's uh, the skin of a giant bear, um, which has been turned into a rug on the floor. Um, but you can see that uh, um, the the gladiators with Kashrim and Ares are the main uh, sort of guests here. But the uh, being that the only other people that are in the room are but what appears to be the owner, the barman, and then a a massive. Uh, a massive man in golden armor and purple skin. Has he got magic glowing stones on his hand? It's <laughs> funny you should mention that. <laughs> so as you walk in, quite coincidentally, he gets up from his uh, um, his from his chair, straightens up to his full sort of nine foot height, and goes over to the te to the bar. Goes, I am Thanos, and I have collected each of the six infinity stones. And he holds up a golden gauntlet where he's got six uh, glowing stones in it. And he's uh, twiddling his thumb and uh, middle finger again as if he's uh, like got some sort of twitch. And he snaps his fingers. I believe that entitles me to a free coffee. The whole family's moving to a new neighborhood. I'm in. Let's go. Where's this new neighborhood? Guys? Uh, <laughs> I, I just stand there in wonder. Is that barman's like, yep, yep, that's all well and good. And he pulls out to uh, put, um, put a jug of coffee to him, which Thanos then exchanges for like, these little, um, put almost plasticky. Um, put stones and then t takes his coffee back over to the table. Was that just oh. a really expensive coffee? Seems like some sort of loyalty system. <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder if it's only just for him or whether there's this whole group out there who are also trying to collect the same but final got that first. Maybe yeah, yeah, and then so as um, put, as he pours the put coffee into his cup, he just goes, Avengers. <laughs> 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 well, he doesn't seem very popular. <laughs> I go straight over to him. And I, sit, and I like, just be like, sir. Your whole look is amazing. What did you do to earn so many amazing trinkets to get this coffee? I'm very intrigued. I wiped out the population of five different cities and then and then ripped the final one out of the head of my enemy. Maybe we should I go pale, slowly stand up and back away. That seems like a lot of work for a coffee. It really does, doesn't it? I, I mean, at least make it a mocker. Huh? <laughs> You just hear the voice going, We're not interested in mortal concerns. <laughs> but he's wiped out five cities. Mortal cities. <laughs> Wait, so if I go down and burn down a city, you won't care? Are you a demon burning cities? Do I look like a demon? I don't know, I don't have eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Can I set him off so I got fire? <laughs> so you said one fire? Huh? Is that one fire? I did a little fire. Yeah, set what's on fire? His clothes. Oh, God. <laughs> you just hear Katie and like, no, don't, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> but he can't see. He just said his eyeballs are on fire. I'm just making his fire a bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so I walk away not doing anything, but casually rolling a fireball around in my head. 
Computer's just like, can we please, please sort this out before I just die of embarrassment, please? Oh, you ain't said nothing yet, love. <laughs> oh, I have. Um, put, I live with Scott and Clarissa. You can imagine how that goes. And Jason. And Jim. Well, we need a round of fireball whiskey. So the bar, so the barman looks over and so uh, put, is that bottles or mugs? Definitely mugs. I knew this book was coming <laughs> <out of here. laughs> um, Matt, <laughs> I don't want a whiskey. What did the baby bring me butter? <laughs> it's not cheese, Aya, it's butter. <laughs> the baby likes cheese and she's brought me a square <laughs> bottle of butter thinking it's cheese. <laughs> Yeah, you've already had ice cream, Maya. Oh no, I've lost my, I've lost the page. So no. Where is it? Okay, so a tankard of um, of fire whiskey is a, um, a gold piece each, or nine gold for a bottle. I'll just buy a bottle. Okay, so you want to give them nine gold? Uh, I'll buy a bottle with like no intention to actually properly drink it. So nine gold each then. Who do you think we are after uh, being in that shop? I'd say at least three screws, to be honest. No, oh, I guess. Yeah, sure. So, what are you talking about? Nothing, don't worry. We're just uh, theorizing. Just bet again. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of uh, how many HP points does Kashan have? On a scale of 1 to 92, how hard do you think you're metagaming? <laughs> uh, like, a, like, a, like a zero. Like maybe a one. We're just discussing what's happened. Why my HP? <laughs> You've got the highest sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very fair. I passed my check. Holy <laughs> 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 oh, <that was> Bill. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, we did, but still. <laughs> I'm not a liar. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> this time. <laughs> I didn't even lie to the people outside. <laughs> I deny that. That's true. You didn't lie. Thank you. I was so stressed. <laughs> 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 Me stressed in a situation of a confrontation? Never. It's like, I know. I was watching. Did you hear me, you bank? Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know. Alright. <laughs> you went no way. <laughs> okay, so put from behind you, I'm assuming you and Marilla are at the bar. Yes. Uh, yes. I should move myself. Is this the phone? I assume. Yep. Yeah. So from behind you, you can hear but, uh, the deep rumble of cash room going, Brother, you're here! Yeah. I got a new clock. It's Kishan's evil twin! One moment, get in the bottle. Oh, it's Kishan's evil twin. 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 They greet him with a, a like a hat, like a hand on the arm handshake, like a, a good like a warrior's good, like a predator handshake. <laughs> okay, girl, what's wrong with that? Brother, this place is incredible. I've never seen the like. The food is good, but well, the food is hot. And the the drinks are strong, and the wench, wow, she's well worked. 
<laughs> At which point, one of the knights comes through, uh, adjusting his trousers, and then after him, yeah, but uh, what appears to be the t uh, the the inn's bard basically uh, comes in after after him, looking a bit sheepish. Whoa! I I look to the ceiling. <laughs> Okay, and on the ceiling, you can see various pieces of crystal. Oh, <laughs> no! no. <laughs> <laughs> so, brother. Uh, but what news do you have? The men are getting so somewhat anxious about uh, what's to come. Well, I have an idea that might be of interest to you. Come, sit. Yeah. I'll across from yeah. Yeah. So Casey comes over and um, sits uh, next to him. Oh, more other comes around and sits next to you. Ah, so who's this fine specimen? This is Kim. She's a senior in the office. And she put, she gives um, put cash from sort of. Um, once over, is it? I'm going to be your new boss. Which cash room then laughs and is like, You! I'm sure, for, I'm sure being your subordinate is very well and good and very highly enjoyable, but unfortunately, no, I don't think so. Why? Do you just appear next to him? Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I assume that she's been stood behind him the entire time. <laughs> Alumba, where are you sitting? And uh, Marela, where are you? Uh, I am going to sit on the floor, just there. <laughs> With my like beer, like the the bottle sort of there. Occasionally, I'll just pick it up, sniff it, pretend to take a sip, and just put it back, and none of it goes down. And then when Kashan's has slowly emptied, I'm gonna swap our bottles. Okay, so Kashan, I'm assuming you are actually drinking. Yes. Okay. All right. How many? Wonder baby is dressed. How many um, how many drinks have you had over the course of this conversation so far? I'm uh, I, I'm polite these days, so I'm not drinking it straight from the bottle. I, I took a glass from the bottle. All right, so, then. I'm like, so I had like one glass so far. <laughs> okay, can I get uh, one constitution check from you then, please? Oh my god, it's strong, man. Uh, con, that's a 24. <laughs> okay. So you feel a growing heat in your... Per in your stomach, which then comes up, and so you f you feel like you're going to belch, and you as you do, fl small flames just erupt from your mouth, but it's just like a fiery burp as opposed to your fire breath weapon. I swear this moment never happens. <laughs> Can I get an inside check from you? Yeah. I'm feeling not very insightful today. That's a seven. <laughs> Okay, uh, you don't get any insight from it then? Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> so why, 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 why can't Katie be your boss? Oh, I mean, look at her. She's, no, she's barely bigger than you are. And that's a problem? Oh, yes. I mean, who would follow me if I followed somebody so, um, size, size orientated? Um... I can assure you, Katie's a lot stronger than she looks. No, no, no. And uh, Katie sort of stands up and says, "No, I, I think uh, your brother has a point. Maybe a demonstration in strength is in order." I think that he's would already be been beaten by a tiger once. Do we need to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> she just gives you a um, slight wink. <laughs> I still I think that's an excellent idea, and uh, hand cash him a glass of the. Uh, a whiskey soon and you'll need this. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, the good stuff. And he, put, he put, takes a swig and then voluntarily yeah. fails the um, put. Yeah, um, put down the stairs backwards. Okay. <laughs> but, and then voluntarily fails the um, put, uh, put the constitution check. And then as a result, 
he unleashes a breath weapon into like the the roof of the house that's substantially larger than anything you've ever pu uh, pushed out. <laughs> I think he's bigger than your one, Kashan. It's not about the size, the potency. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's it. and Casey's Casey's now standing up and is put got her hands on the table and put. And towards him, you can see that unfortunately, this gives you a perfect view down her top. I'm a female, it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> that's normal. I assume that's normal for human women to show off your breasticles. Cashroom <laughs> um, is sort of picking up on this as well, so, but he's um, doing his best to remain sort of um, passive about things. Like, all right then. But, my friend, if I break you, please don't cry. Kishan, can I break your brother? <laughs> no, I think we should let Katie do that. Oh. So Casey gets up and s strolls around the um, table into the centre of the room. Um, no, this is where you will try. Katie and she loses. No, Casey. Um, so basi basically, basically, um, what appears to just seem to be a simple wrestling match um, but occurs. Um, but, um, but so at first, um, but Catherine tries to like rubby tackle her and just pick her up and throw her to the floor. But she seems to be so um, like dexterous that she just slides out of his grip as if uh, like she's like covered in oil or something. And so then trips him, put, trips him up with one leg. Then simply backflips uh, over him, uh, put, so that she's now sitting on his head. And in a very Black Widow style move, she put she flips over, flipping him over and slamming him into the floor. This uh, this causes an eruption of cheers and whoops from the put, the men sit around him, who put who then start jeering at Castrum that he's being beaten by a girl. Does anyone want to do anything at this point? Nah. Can I offer Casey a drink? I'm just going to hold my hand out so she wants it. <laughs> All the way past. <laughs> I'd look to the, uh, the ones that are G-Ray and ask me if they'd like to take you first. <laughs> and so, so the one called Aries basically says, uh, Oh, I would, but we don't have any money. <laughs> How about how about this? Um, if if I win, um, you you teach me how to use a sword like you do, and then if if you win, um, I'll I'll be your man servant. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll do stuff for you. I don't need you to do stuff for me, but sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, ca they go at it again. Unfortunately, Cash Room seems to get the uh, best uh, hold of this, where he put, um, he tries picking her up again, but is able to hold on to her now with his newfound knowledge of what she can do, and he actually does slam her into the floor. Um, but he then brings down a heavy punch down her chest, which connects, which sort of resonates around the room. But then Casey flips back up and simply just uh, does a jump kick to his face. And you hear just like this, ooh, from around the group. And then you just hear um, Ares basically say, uh, can I withdraw my bet? No. <laughs> Does anyone want to do anything before the next round of combat? Nah. I'll take another I, 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 Yeah, I take the bottle thinking that it's empty because I've not been paying attention and take a sip and realise it's still the drink and kind of like, not spit it out but like keep it in my mouth for a second and then very slowly swallow it whilst watching the fight. Okay, can I get a constitution check from you please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not great. That is a five. I wrote a nat one. Okay. So, put you feel the heat rise up in to, in your stomach to your chest and throat. You open your mouth in a great belch, 
which causes fire to erupt out of your mouth, and you take three incendiary damage. So I, I clap over my mouth and be like, did you see that? That was insane. That definitely wasn't me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and then you take three damage. Yeah, and you take three damage. Yeah, you take three damage. So they go at it again, and... Uh, this time, Katie is able to just simply leaps up into the air, and she does basically a triple kick um, to Kashram. One on her way up, one when she's in the air, and then one on her way down. And then, so, as she does, she sneaks on, she slips underneath him, and so, grabs hold of his um, his belt around his waist and pulls him down to the ground. Promptly, then backflips and lands on his back, and so, you hear a, a very decisive crunch. As uh, she dislocates her shoulder. Wow. Nice. And then, so, with that, she makes a very theatrical bow, and so, it comes over to the table and takes a drink from Tordum. Mm-hmm. Is it fireball you're giving her? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So she she takes it, takes a very hearty swig, swallows, and then so, again fails the. Put, Voluntarily fails the constitution check and spurts fire at Kashram, which doesn't actually do anything to him given that he's fireproof, but it does leave a sort of smouldering ember on his um, shoulder, sealing his. Uh, but, which seems to have some sort of um, uh, pain killing relief to him. Well, does that settle that then? I think so. <laughs> Do you need a hand with that? I'm not quite too busy here, children. Let me! Well, take another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, can I get a constitution saving throw from you, please? Yeah. Uh, another 24. Okay. Um, but you simply let out uh, fire from your mouth. It's not a fire breath weapon attack, but um, but, but given what you've seen the others doing, you can basically establish that if you had voluntarily failed that, then your fire breath weapon would have been substantially more powerful. I don't need to think that it's more powerful. <laughs> I'm sure my food. <laughs> Okay, so Kashram comes hobbling over and grabs um, a drink with his other arm. There he is. Uh, his uh, left arm is uh, sort of hanging at a very odd angle. I uh, walk over and hop back into place. Can I get a medicine check for me, please? Yeah. <laughs> medicine. Uh, 19. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. I'm not going to try. Uh, Okay, um, 14. Okay, so with a very satisfying <laughs> uh, it uh, uh, pops back into place and he lets out a yelp. It's like, ah! And then flexes his arms, like, ah, that's better. Do you need any healing? He is looking a bit bruised, whereas Katie, despite the massive impact that she took, doesn't appear to have, doesn't look like she sustained any injury at all. I will cast your wounds on Kashram then. Okay, so how much do you heal him? Uh, I can't do maths. 11 points, there we go. Big numbers. Big numbers, I know, right? <laughs> so Kashram turns to Casey and was like, <clears throat> What sort of work did you have in mind? And Katie says, There's a type where you kill lots and lots of things because we tell you to, kind. The kind where you grow stronger from it, too. Yes, where you get, uh, where you get a roof over your head, good food, hot, where you get hot food, good drink, and um, other benefits. There's a, there's a particular member of our party which I think you should meet. 
Very interested in that sort of stuff. Uh, but Cashroom sort of perks up with this and is like, Really? They don't charge for their service, do they? No, they don't, but they probably should. <laughs> this is the only time I'm ever going to be with this. Frank, <laughs> come here. Da -da -da. Say bear with me. Here we are. Why, hello, darling. I was wondering when you would get the urge to call. Not for me. Say hi to Cashram. Hello, Cashram. Hello, Cashram. Oh, I do love brothers. I especially love brothers at the same time. I already went to the other side of the table after I said hello, I've poured another drink and I'm now just going to watch the uh, <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> watch it on <laughs> And you just see Casey just sit. Uh, uh, close her eyes and put her hand to his hand. So that was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> oh, and you get free wishes with him, but be careful. <laughs> you might cause horrors. Wishes, you say? Like gold? No, 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 don't wish for anything. Don't, don't do it. It's, a, it's, it's not real. Ignore me. <clears throat> you can't do it until you're part of the Alphas. So what do I need to do? To, what do we need to do to join the Alphas? And Katie just saw the folds her arms. So. Well, first, well, first off, you have to accept it, but then you have to put... I'm mommy, I want to yo-yo. Okay. Mommy will talk one after a minute. Well, first off, you have to uh, swear allegiance. Well, that's always a good place to start, but then you then you have to prove yourself by killing something noteworthy. I mean your brother him, your brother was inducted into the into the order by killing a Wendigo. So something equally as uh, as potent as that. I mean for in, the city is at war with uh, hill giants at the moment, so I'm sure taking some of them on will be more than worthy. Anyone want to interject at this? No, I've got nothing in there. So, even you, you've got this. So Cashroom considers and then looks over the others and everyone's... Um, everyone appears to be sort of on the fence and they're just sort of shrugging and so, yeah, why not? And so he, t he takes um, Katie's hands. When do we start? And so Katie says, we just did. And she goes, uh, and so she calls over to the barman. And so from her, from inside her sort of very miniature jacket, um, she pulls out a small bag of coins and she tosses it to the barman. Is that? I'm staying for another couple of nights. And barman let, let out a sigh and was like, oh, please, no. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Um, excellent. Well then, come by, put, and she pulls out a piece of paper and hands it to Catherine. Is there a pit? Come meet me at this address uh, tomorrow morning. We'll get started then. So Catherine basically just looks at him. He's a grunt and shrug. And then he turns to uh, to you and says, You vouch for her? I do. Mm, that's good enough for me then. Very well, we have an accord. Now let's drink. And this time I decisively fail my constitution check. Okay, so is anyone else drinking? Can I make a performance check to uh, do a bigger one than Catherine did before? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, that's 23. <laughs> Lovely, okay. Uh, nice, big, wide lip. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, so but not only is your <coughs> not only is your sort of like breath weapon um, but 
but it's all more potent. And in terms of me of mechanics, that means that the um, saving throw is DC 18 instead of 16 with this. Well done. Um, but you also can see that it would uh, uh, generate more damage, and it also travels in a 20 foot cone as opposed to a 15. Done. I'm gonna have to keep you involved with this one now. It be, yes, you do succeed in it being bigger than your brother's. <laughs> I didn't say it was all about potency. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then. <clears throat> so now that this has all been settled, is there anything else you'd like to do? Well, you have. I'm good. Uh, I'd like to buy a bottle to go. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's nine gold. <coughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll spend the nine gold. But, uh, yeah. Okay. It seems like a good, it seems like a good investment. <laughs> okay. Um, but let me just quickly rearrange stuff uh, on the alpha base screen. I'll be. I'll transfer you over in a second. That's very nice butter, Bubba. <coughs> Alright. Uh, I think I wish you'd have to call it there for the day. Okay. Uh, got a lot of stuff to do before I work at 7 in the morning, so. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I had off there, but let me know how it turns out. Sure, um, but sure. I'll let you know what's happening in regards to the next session. Yeah, bro, yeah, cool. Alright, see you around, mate. Good, best of luck, I'll see you there. Hello, buddy. Bye. Okay, so you guys return to um, the Alpha base with Casey. She's very eager to get back, uh, to the point that she almost runs there. And so, <coughs> you eventually arrive, and so, um, but she rushes in, and so, uh, but runs straight past uh, George and just comes so, into the living room and just shouts out for Scott. At which point, so, 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 at which point, a tentacled black and orange panther comes charging around the corner at you. Guess what, oh, guess what, guess what? I'm a, a I'm a displacer beast. A, a what now? A displacer beast. Look, 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 and he starts cantering towards you, but he trips over one of his tentacles and flops onto the floor. I pick up the mini displacer beast. <laughs> oh god, that is terrifying. <laughs> Honestly, me caring for Padwin is probably what gives me all the stupid ideas that I can be friends with crazy creatures. I, uh, I pick up the mini displays of these and proceed to move towards George. <laughs> well, if you have a look in the uh, Discord, that's what Padwin looks like. That is adorable, <laughs> and this is why I have an issue with doing things like petting. <laughs> Why are you oh, so cute? Crackings. We could never hurt him. Exactly. Why does he have like nine balls? <laughs> <laughs> like, and and like I don't know, like tentacles, and shit. I, I don't, I don't know. Because I'm a displacer beast. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are, buddy. At this point, I'm not even shocked. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Concerned, I'm just accepting the <laughs> strange creatures being and stuff. One of these days, we're gonna walk into this base. There's gonna be an actual like wild creature that's like kind of small in size, and I'm just gonna think it's pattern. I'm just gonna assume it is, and it's gonna do something good. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Like, I, like I'm just so accepting that. Like, I, I don't even consider the fact that it could be something 
you. Not Harwin. <laughs> Don't give the DM ideas. Uh, have I uploaded that dragon token? Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Right, so... <laughs> so Padwin sort of rolls out of your hand and then leads the way. Tripping over his tentacles as he does so. And George is basically waiting in the corner and so... Uh, the late Jenkins was rather upset, so I believe you'll be needed in the main room. Okay, so, um, I take it you guys go into the main room after Katie? I'm trying to get a picture of Yeah, I uh, hand off the mini displays at least to George and follow Katie. Is Katie sad? So, you come in and Katie seems to be right in the middle of what looks to be a mini pa miniature panic attack and is taking both Scott and Clarissa to sort of console her. And so, eventually, she just um, put, just falls into um, uh, Scott's arms and he just sort so of talks over her head and says, like, What happened? Um. She got into a fight with uh, Gashan's brother. And she, she shakes her head and says, no, no, before that, the, the Inquisition is here and they're looking for Padwin. The possessed people! Oh yeah, I forgot about those guys. Uh, this brings the entire room to a complete halt. And, so, but, and so, Jen's like, did you say the Ole Miss Inquisition? Yes. And they're specifically looking for Padron. They're they looking for the necromancer who summoned the Cerberus. So that doesn't mean that that was patched with Win, because how do we not know some other necromancer didn't summon a different Cerberus? They can also think it's a necromancer, and Padron is a necromancer, so... Oh, I suppose that's something. Uh, Scott, uh, Scott then basically passes Casey over to um, Clarissa. And so, uh, well, this complicates things, but at least it uh, doesn't necessarily affect our plans. You know, put, I'll be taking Padwin with me to New Asgard, and that'll at least throw them off uh, the scent for the time being. I'm so, and he looks at you guys and then shakes his head and like, sorry, this is probably very confusing for you. Yeah, these people that we should be worried about. Or... I wouldn't necessarily say worried about, but uh, the the almost Inquisition is a is an order that was created several hundred years ago, and they basically they're they're celestially possessed individuals who uh, use their powers uh, of the saints that possess them um, to fight in the collective against evil. Um, but we've had our dealings with them before, but obviously the gestures that um, himself and Casey, we're not exactly their favourites. So, wait, they are possessed? But you said they're not demons! There's, there's more than one type of possession. I believe um, that if this was to be a game, you would consider it more... Warlock power as opposed to demonic power. Okay. Pact magic, I believe it's called. Okay. But that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. And if they if they've discovered that Padwin has magical potential and that he doesn't know how to control it, then most likely they'll take him. At but best, they'll take him away from us. Nobody knows how to control it when they're born. But you have to teach them. Are you teaching him how to do it? I'm doing our best, but none of us are really magic users. The problem is... Can every... I just give him the scroll? <laughs> no, no, don't give, don't give him the scroll. Don't give him the scroll. <laughs> well, how else is he going to learn? Oh, I like scrolls. I like burning things. No, it's not burning scrolls. What sort of scroll is it then? Uh, it's a blank scroll. A blank scroll. Oh, does that mean I can cast a spell blank? No, you learn to put the magic in the scroll. Nope, I cast blank. <laughs> and blank. 
There you go, it has no magic, he blanked himself. So technically he's blanked his own magic out of existence. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyone else there? Hello? Guys? Right, yes. Sorry. I, uh, I'm not a spellcaster. Stop the dice. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, at best, they'll take him away from us and train him. Um, but in worst case, they'll consider him too powerful for his own good, which chances are they will, given how he was where he gets the magic from, and have him executed. Where does he get the magic from? Uh, Casey saw, Chris saw raises her hand while um, cuddling Casey and was like, yeah, it's kind of my fault. So Padman comes uh, comes over to you and says, Pip, Auntie Clarissa fell from the sky and that got her in trouble. So, yeah. so I was given magic from so I, I was given magic from, from grand from granddaddy God, and and that stopped the universe from exploding. Oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> I think we can say I would be glad that you didn't blow up the universe. Yes. I mean, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. And so P Clarissa just sort of like raises an eyebrow at you and says, like, does it? <sighs> as much as any of that happens in this place, though. Yeah. Taking it away. <laughs> Put it this way. I just, walk, I just walked in and he's a displacer beast. Like, I, I, uh, how do I question this? <laughs> Why would I bother? Right, so... <laughs> right, so... Back in the day, whenever I fell to Earth, um, but... I, put, I went against my father's will. That's technically impossible, so therefore reality should have been destroyed. Padwin's creation, she sort of gives Casey a sort of nudge, um, but was sort of like the balancing act to that. But Padwin is an immensely magical being, and I don't think it, there's ever been something like him before. He's currently a displacer beast, thank god he was unique. <laughs> well, someone does definitely need to train him. We can't have him accidentally summoning more things and causing more issues. We are looking, believe me. Uh, the only problem is, is that uh, put pretty much every place that would want to um, put though it's capable of training him, comes with the red tape that he has to uh, put, say goodbye to us for the rest of his life and never have anything to do with us. Is there nobody within the office that you know? Not particularly. Uh, all these recruits and not one of you has the capability to teach him. Oh, well, but we don't and Unfortunately, every magic user that we've had any real contact with has uh, sort of ended up wanting to kill us. So um, our options aren't particularly great. So we don't count. Right. Yeah, I mean, somehow that tracks too. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll find one. Uh, so we'll manage it somehow. But for the, but the important thing for now is that he's kept safe. I'm a T-Rex. Right yes, you are, Pablo. Yes, you are. <laughs> but aside from, well, aside from this, and he saw Pat's Katie on the charge and said, we'll sort this, don't worry. Aside from that, how did it go? I think it went well. Yeah. Uh, do, so, do we have any new recruits then? We have a couple. And so, Katie saw all the pull stuff together and say, so, Yes, yeah, so I'm starting training with them in the morning. 
Is it? Well, that's good. We can discuss our next actions for what we're going to do over the next few days. But um, it's getting late, so how about we organise some dinner? I did eat. Okay. I'm trying to make the use of this D&D uh, &D feast book, which I um, put, uh, got technically from work because they gave me a, a voucher for it. Um, so, so what sort of cuisine are you thinking? Human, elven, dwarven or halfling? I'll take dwarven. Yeah, it's good dwarven. Uh, Give me up some of that good, good dwarf. Yeah, that's pretty fancy. Okay, so after a couple of hours, oh by the way, um, this is basically going to be you guys chilling out for the rest of the night, so do you guys want to apply a long rest? I would love to do that. Okay, so put, uh, George basically puts together um, smoked sausages with sauerkraut and dwarven mustard. Um, put with a uh, side of black pudding and some uh, dwarven flatbread to go with it. That um, sounds amazing. It kind of does, right? Uh, just, just try to have a look at the... Um, uh, put description for it. Um, okay, so put, basically have this, and so if you want to give yourself um, eight temporary hit points, which will apply after your long rest. Ooh. Um, oh, there. Nice. I can survive. I will have kill. And at that point, the T Rex in front of you grows to proper proportions and is no longer oh my paddling. Paddling? <laughs> Roll down. <laughs> I thought you were for. I thought for a second the T Rex was about cast power and kill. <laughs> oh no no no! He's not that level yet. <laughs> Wait. What? I need fifty more experience points. <laughs> Stop looking at me like I'm XP. <laughs> well, technically at level eight. Uh, eight XP. You're at level 8, so if he was to eat you, you would give him 5,900 XP. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's level 10. Um, yeah, 3,900. I <laughs> am not XP. Fish are friends, not, not food. food. <laughs> Same goes for Dragon Balls, mostly. Me. Okay. I like dragons. And guess what? Guess what? What? I am a dragon. Oh my god! <laughs> I am a dragon. A very, a very terrifying dragon little Padwin. Very terrifying. Yes. And I breathe fire. That is, that is really impressive, Padwin. Yes, and in no way am I foreshadowing any foreseeable event. <laughs> Just writing that down really quickly. I don't know what foreshadowing is. <laughs> okay, so after you've all had this, um, uh, this meal, um, plus, um, Uh, plus various um, drinks. Um, George is basically doing his uh, usual 
um, cocktail making stuff. Um, you guys basically settle around the um, living room again with uh, everyone else. Having gotten the horses and snake under control. Okay, so Pip, the sculpt um, uh, basically stands up and holds out his uh, glass and is like, well, given everything that's happened over the last couple of days, um, Pip, I'd like to propose a toast to us and all the friends that we've made along the way. I'll toast to that. Good. May the next few days and weeks and the rest of our lives be filled with agony, turmoil and borderline starvation. And may we all live to complain about it in our old age. The friends we made along the way, definitely. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, we've had to make some slight adjustments to our plans, but... But uh, majoritively, everything stands as it uh, did before. So, me, Jason, Stick and Padwin will uh, make our way to New Asgard with you lot. We'll put, redouble our efforts in that point so that we can get immediate travel. So the Inquisition can't find us. Um, Casey, what do you want to do with your new recruits? So... Katie then shrugs and uh, I don't know, I've never been a alpha leader before. So Jen basically just sighs and she's re basically reading a small book. She um, puts it down and so, uh, well, go off and deal with the um, with the giants if they survive that and they get inducted. Um, but you can start investigating uh, the, uh, the house for the uh, beholder victims, so you can get any points there. And then once you've done that, then take them to Aqua Vader and see what can be done there. So Katie just simply nods and then um, put... She's basically sitting on the floor in between Clarissa's legs, who's sitting on the um, sofa behind her. She basically um, put, holds on to Clarissa's hand. Not necessarily like... Um, in the sort of like, I'm scared sort of way, but just being affectionate. Um, but Jen then says, well, I need to stay here. I'm dealing with the, um, the king. Uh, but he's taken quite an interest in you lot, actually. And she nods to you guys. Um, but he's... Uh, your help with dealing with the giants and the werewolves has earned you quite a lot of diplomacy points. That's good, right? Yes, I hope so. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but there's rumor, there's word in the water about um, a dinner invitation, but uh, I wouldn't trust rumors. But uh, leave this with me. I'll see what's happening. And then, so, and then Clarissa pipes up saying, and I'm going to be heading over to Drips here um, but when everyone heads off so that we can find out what's going there. And then so, she turns to you, Lord, and says, I'll, I'll meet you in Minisipardus. She sort of, it, sort of um, flexes her shoulders slightly and so I've got ways of getting in that you guys don't. But uh, put, I'll I'll meet you in Minister Pardis in about a week from today. That should mean that we get there around about the same time. Why do you have wings of getting there that we can't use? A, a tele 
teleportation device? Wings? Um, a deal with an archangel? Uh, another archangel? <laughs> Sorry, I missed what your first question was. How, how would you have a method of getting there? It's called flight. <laughs> Obviously. Um, <laughs> I, um, and also, I'm not going to be taking a horse and a giant snake with me. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> Unless you're leaving Mikhail here. Uh, what are we doing with Cousin Miguel? Well, but at this point, um, Connor speaks up and is like, but I wouldn't recommend that Miguel travels for quite a while. He's taken some quite bad injuries. It makes sense to let him go. Besides, he'll have the place to himself once the horses leave. That's true. Nope, he's your snake, so it's your decision. I think it'd be good for him to be free and, you know, have some time for himself. He, he's a, a young buddy snake, we should hold him back. I don't know why I'm talking about him like he's our child. <laughs> yes, well, given that he was only born, like, 24 hours ago, I'm fairly sure he would agree. He's also from a bean. <laughs> Exactly. We don't know how long he has. He deserves the most out of life. <laughs> at this point, you hear, at this point, you hear like this shriek as as the garden turns into flames. <laughs> or how long the horses have either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you look out the window and you can just see that like, Miguel is just like looking in through the window at you. <laughs> Hi, baby. I'm just give a little wave. <laughs> I'm like, who's a good boy? <laughs> you know in House Train of Dragon 2, you know the way Hiccup's mom sort of talks to Toothless? I'm doing that. Mm. I'm an Albert. Oh, hello little Albert. And s said Albert. Looks like that. That is beyond you. <laughs> oh, not that bad when die. Like, already we could have, but we cannot let you die. <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm going to end this campaign in this one stop? <laughs> oh my god, Matt, if you kill Padwin, I'm leaving. <laughs> Never playing again. <laughs> well, if that it... is my official resignation form. <laughs> well, if, it, if, it, if it helps, in the books, Padwin is the sole survivor. So far, anyway. <laughs> 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 Love well, I've got everybody's deaths planned out except for Padwin. Whether or, I'll no, use no, them. No, no, no. Whether or not I'll use them is another matter. <laughs> Please, Matt, do not kill us, Hadwin. I will sue. <laughs> For emotional damages, I will bear witness. <laughs> okay, so... Do you have anything that you want to sort of add to this? Um, I don't think so. Oh! Okay. I don't think so either. Okay, so, um... Given that we've, um, we've lost Trin, Liam, and Natalie, shall we call it here for tonight? Uh, yeah. That's a good idea, yeah.